Hello everyone, my name is Yonex and welcome to another Civilization 5 guide. Today I want to talk about ancient ruins, the ruins you mostly find in early game. Sometimes you get it on an archipelago map later on in the game, because it's on an island where no one went yet. But we're gonna just take a normal map for it, so Fractal or Pangaea. I think Fractal is fine. I'm going to do this guide on Immortal. I like to do guides on DT as well, but in this case with DT you have um, less ruins mostly, because AI already gets an extra settler and extra units. Therefore, as a second city, claiming more land, able to see more stuff, so can pick up more ruins right away. I think for this um, guide it's useful to be... Shoshone, because Shoshone is the one sieve you can pick your own ancient runes. And for every other sieve, it's a random bonus you get. So I think this will be the most clear so I can explain it to you clearly and show you what's the possibilities and why it's important to hunt for them early. So let's get into the game. Okay, Eva, welcome back. So we have our city here, and of course we should settle it first. I think the spot where it is is probably okay. It's coastal. And I'm not uh, gonna talk too much about where to settle your city here. Because we already did a guide about it, it was a previous guide, so you can watch that one if you want more information about it. Uh, settling a spot here is fine. Uh, production focus. So for this time, normally I go Pathfinder Monument Shrine or when I can Shrine and then Monument. But for this time we want uh, two Pathfinders or two Scouts. Because we're really gonna need it. Not that tall. Uh, let's take Pottery. So the Shoshone has a Pathfinder, and this Pathfinder has uh, a skill called Native Tongue. And there's the first Asian room, perfect. This skill makes it possible for us to pick our rune, and it's really useful. And also, they are as strong as warriors. But they are as mobile as scouts, so they can go fast through jungle and stuff like that. So, this is our list of options we can take. Um, we can get extra population, so get extra population. And this is an extra population in the nearest city to the room. In the beginning that's always your capital, but if you have more cities the city closest to the rune will get extra population. Um, this is 20 culture. So that's really useful if you want to get right into your um, policy tree, get tradition started. Although Shoshone is good for liberty as well, but tradition is so good. 9 out of 10 times you take tradition. This is gold. You get between 50 and 100 gold, so on average like 75 gold. Uh, look at the maps. Not really a great one. As Spain it's actually quite good if you can find a national wonder with it. Otherwise not that great. Uh, technology. Always good if there's not anything better. Uh, let you catch up in the beginning in technologies quickly. So that's a good thing. About technologies. Uh, I'm gonna explain a bit more about it in a moment. And you can equip your unit. A warrior will always um, upgrade your unit. A warrior will always upgrade to a spearman and a scout to an archer. However, the unit of Shoshone will upgrade to a compass and bowman right away. So it's the upgraded archer right away. So it's really good upgrade. And with that you can easily harass city-states in the beginning or have like a quite a strong army in the beginning. So actually it's quite useful and having an archer with scout uh, upgrades is quite useful as well. This one is actually quite good. 
But the most strong one is population. I always take this one first. My second option, or the second one I always take is culture. Then I upgrade my unit. And then we have three. And after, you can't use the same Asian Dream bonus every time. You need to have like, if you take population first, you need to have two other options first from the list before you can take the population again. So w the first, fourth, seventh, tenth, or second, fifth, eighth, eleventh, like that. So population is so important in this game because it's pretty much everything. So we get an uh, extra population, our city will grow faster, we get extra gold right away, increases our production, stuff like that. Okay, let's uh, move to the next one. So I was going to explain the technology one. I can do it right away, actually. So at this moment, we you always start with agriculture. If we pick first the first uh, one as uh, technology, then you, we would be only possible to get pottery, animal husbandry, archery, or mining. It's still random which technology you get. However, like if we would have researched pottery already, then we also have a chance to get sailing, calendar, writing. So a second tier uh, technology, which are worth a lot more science. This is like worth 40 and this is worth 63 science. And the same thing goes if you have like trapping done, you have a chance to get horseback riding. So if you get um, these filled quickly, you have a ch better chance to get one of the second tier. And even if you're lucky, you have calendar and writing done, you still, you have a chance to get philosophy. And early philosophy is really useful to get a super early national college. So yeah, science is key. And that's also one of the reasons why we take population as first one. Because the more population you have, the more science you get. One population, we would have four science now. But since we have two pop, we have five science. Because we get three science from our palace plus two science from population. Because one science is equal to one population. And there are some extra things like libraries and university, which modifies it. So let's continue. So we have cost here, so the chance of having a rune somewhere here is really low. So let's continue here. I feel like I'm talking a lot, but I think that's the purpose of a guide anyway. Okay, so now we have the chance to go right or left. I'm actually going left because I think there might be land might be ending here if I'm on the hill. Yes. And this would be like a really good city spot. You don't have a river but you have a unique luxury and four fish and bananas. But it seems not to be super contested so that's okay. Uh, six turns for that one. And there's the next room. So we got now our next pop. And this one was from National Guard, not from Louis. So, and as you can see, we get now six science. So an extra science from our population. So that's how important population is in this game. So next one we take this room. And that's pottery. Next one is animal. So we got our list again. And as you can see, population is not an option now. A second one, as I uh, said, I would take culture. You get 20 culture. However, if you play on marathon, you get 
um, some more culture and also more gold I believe oh no not gold stays the same um, you get more fate and I haven't talked about uh, fate runes yet because those are only available after turn 20 so after turn 20 you get a new text for fate and it says something like great profit I think we will be able to see it so let's take culture and it means we can I uh, tradition. I haven't seen any reason yet to take liberty. Tradition is always standard good. So it returns till the next one. It's always good to end your turn on a hill, since you have extra sight around it. I believe the cattle is on range now. Yeah. Shoshone is really good to grow quickly. Because not only we get the extra population, but we also have um, the tiles to work them. Since normally you would start like with only the tiles around you, and then Maybe you expand to a few tiles, but since we are Shoshone, we get eight extra tiles around the city, ex next to these, one directly around us, and these eight tiles are like the best tiles or the AI takes, because for instance we didn't take this one, but we already got the tile in the third row, and it's this one is like second row as well, but. These are not good tiles, so we got other tiles which were better. I want to send this north, and I see that was a good choice. I'm gonna send this one west, and the other um, pathfinder will go south. So that's the next room. So, barbarian camps not good, we called not important now. Maps, it's a bad one. Technology can be useful. So this is the time I will want to upgrade my unit. And then the next one I can pick population again. And as you can see, this is now a composite bowman. So that's really lovely, because then they stay relevant through the game. And normally with scouts, you disband them because you don't need them anymore. I think our land is ending here. So I found plenty. So land ends there. And there too. Uh, let's just head back. And you can see there's like coast here. Chances of having coast here and not continue land is very big. So I'm gonna go immediately south. I would love to look, take a, a peek on this hill, but it will take me an extra turn, so I'm not gonna bother. And the reason it takes an extra turn is because zone of control of this barbarian unit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this one east and use this fuck off and since we already took culture early we can already go for our next policy so that's plantation and we need the forces there I would love normally to finish archery and mining and get bronze working. Actually, let's just get bronze working anyway. If you pick up some more technologies, but we don't have mining directly, so I'm gonna go archery first and then pick up bronze working for iron. 
always good to explore resources where they come right away, like the horses here. So three turns for you. I have no idea they will meet each other. So that's the next room. And we should be able to get population, so I'm just backing it with one. And as you can see, population is now back here. So we picked that one. And land still continues here, it seems. So since we have access to population now, oh, so I didn't assign the previous one. Let's do it like this. We still have good tiles to work. If I would have only two foot, I would consider working um, two hammers, although the gold is good here. Or just buying that tile to work the horses. But three foot is good. So let's work like this. And since we finished, pro our production is quite low, but our science is quite good. So it's fine. So we met Polynesia here, and they are already on the water. Which tells me they have already um, optics, probably. So this one is done here. I will send him back, I think. And this one can continue here. So now there's one more thing actually I need to tell here. Since the police and scout came from this way, the chance is really high the runes here are already taken. We're still gonna go here, but the effect of it will be lower. Um, actually, let's take a look. It seems that it will be ending here. Okay, you go up. Oh no, there is more land here though. Okay, that's good. So now I take mining. If we take attack, um, and the attack one will be after the, instead of the culture, probably. Then we can take, if we complete mining, a uh, second tier attack, which is really useful in the beginning to catch up quite quickly. And the horse is expanded. Only one mil So promotion. Uh, oh. We don't have the scout promotion. I thought we would get it. That's fine. So yeah, it's quite fast to you. So I'll move on the hill. And move here. It's important in a game to uh, scout a lot because you want to know where you want to settle your next cities. And since we have quite a, a lot of land around here, around is sugar probably here on this town because you have a mountain here as well. So observatory, we got cacao sugar, you have cattle horses, and you have deer. This is a really good city spot. That is, those are out of range. Um, if you go Liberty, you could have a city here and here, but for tradition, no. Here's a good spot to get all the fish. You could even go sit on the river here. Once again, for Liberty, good spot. You probably want to... Has, mm, no, you don't get the wine, huh? You want the gold in some way. Seems land ends here, so let's go there. It 
since the Polynesian, uh, Polynesian units came from right here, I'm sure there's more land here. Fractal land is mostly connected in some ways. However, here it seems it's not. Yeah, it ends here. Then I'm actually curious about the Polynesian units. Uh, let's explain it. So as we can, maybe it would happen, but we can't. So yeah, now we need um, optics. So we can cross uh, water tiles. Uh, you need to heal. I'll probably get rid of this camp and then get these units here. Because of our fast grow in the beginning, we got a lot of stuff from that already. So we have a new here. Gonna move back, I'm not too willing to fight a barbarian here. So six pop, next to him. So we have decent food already and production is getting along as well. So that's really good for a start. And that's why I love I like to start with Shoshone. Shoshone is one of my favorites. So let's get bronze working. Monument and then we need okay. We have a lot of land around here, but rather um, uncontested, except that Polynesia is here. I'm wondering how many runes we can still find. We're gonna pull back that unit. I want to move as quickly as possible so I don't mind pissing them off for trespassing. You were up, you almost died. So this seems like a small land, so here the land continues. Kilimanjaro. Well, that will be a definitely second city. And especially as Shishoni, it's actually quite nice to me. Okay. Now we are at the point that we haven't finished our monument yet, because our technology and culture went a bit faster. So in this case, normally you would take legalism to get your free culture building. But since we had an early start because of the rune, I'm going to pick this one because I always want... Personally, I prefer not to get on in my capital a free monument, but I want a free amphitheater, which is the next one, which takes a lot more hammers to produce. So I take that one. And then next one, by that time the monument is done, then I take it. So as you can see, we now moved already one, but we can still move another two units. This is because of uh, two tiles, because of Mount Kilimanjaro. 
In which case there's uh, extra movement. And an extra rune as well. So, as much as I love 20 culture, it's only f worth 5 turns at this point. And this one, since we need 26 fate already, this is an easy choice. So, in, in the beginning you take population culture upgrade unit, and then population, if possible, fate, because it's by them turn 20. And then you upgrade your unit again. And then it's population, the technology, and then upgrade the third unit or gold. So we take fate here. And we got 40 fate immediately, which means there are already some pantheons gone. Oh, there are already four pantheons gone, and we had to wait originally 26 turns, but because we choose the fate one, we immediately can get a pantheon. And if so, and this one is 40 fate. If you already have a pantheon at this point, and you pick the fate one, which is called Great Prophet, this one wasn't, then you get 80 fate, which is a huge chunk. Now it's an early religion and increases the chance to get your religion going really early a lot. So that's a good thing. So let's go to the next one. Uh, I just want to see the, this town. I knew it would end, but I want to know if there was a room. Because if there is one, I have to go all the way back later. So, oh yeah, um, this extra movement from the Mount Kilimanjaro is only only for on hill tiles, not on flat tiles or much. So in this case, we need a Pantheon. We have cacao, which is not a pantheon worthy. We have a few pastures, and we have wheels. Uh, stone circles is gone already. Possible new cities, we have food from fish. Sugar, that's plantation as well, cacao. So we only have a couple of pantheon choices. But uh, there are a lot of pensions you can pick, but I think that's a good time for us to leave this guide where it is. And then next time we continue this series and talk about the pensions and which one are a good choice. Especially in a case like this where we don't have a good pension we can pick. Since it's all plantation luxuries. And that are the worst luxuries to choose a pantheon for. So we, I'm gonna save this game, and then I use this game to for the next guide to explain more about uh, stuff. I would like to thank you all for watching. I hope it was teachful, learned something from it, and I hope you also learned as you shown here which order you want to take. Uh, which ancient runes are useful and which are not, and which one you can get. So thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next guide or any other video. Thank you all, and goodbye.